Okay, this video is, now I've done several things to this bike to make sure that we uh, have it done appropriately here. I have a little, you can see that very well, that this is a snowmobile off switch basically. And it goes over here, I did a serial connection between this and the kill switch so that when this pops off, it kills the bike. So if I was to fall off and this is wrapped around my arm like that, I get disconnected from the bike, the kill switch will go off. Okay, that's to explain that modification. And the other modification of which this thing always seems to get put on incorrectly. Um, this steering damper uh, now, most steering dampers of this type go on the inside on this way, but in order to get this to fit right and have the full range of turning of the uh, handlebars, I needed to put it on this side of the center post, and I had to make my own uh, system to, to be able to uh, mount it to this bike because this bike does not have a aftermarket steering damper post system like this. Not even for the one that attaches to the handlebar where you have a little round piece here and it attaches right there. Didn't even have those. So I had to do some interesting things for this situation. I actually, this is on incorrectly because I need to use the full gimbal of this part of the steering damper and this needs to be on the down down port this is a handmade homemade handmade deal as a jerry rig it all together so to speak and in order to have this have the full gimbal range I need to have this spacer here I hope you guys can see it the spacer on the bottom side to be able to have it there and the bolt itself uh, I, I purchased a particular angle uh, on this bolt for the, the type of head it is so that this gimbal will have more range because this this is really an awkward design you might say it is um, the one thing I get really irritated with with the mechanic is that they always want to take this off and then reassemble it incorrectly. So it's supposed to go with this uh, spacer on the bottom and the bolt part on the top so that we can uh, have the maximum range of the gimbling that goes back and forth. Um, so it's really irritating to me that they assemble this incorrectly. Uh, in order to make sure that we have the full range of the handlebars, which is part of a racing spec requirement. So, and the other part that I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going, going to be taking this post off, but I prefer to take the tank off first before I take that steering post out, um, which isn't too terribly to do, too terribly difficult. I'm just going to use a crescent wrench on the back two bolts, I'm leaving the, uh, for some reason they think they need to remove the post in order to take the tank off. I don't know why. It's highly irritating because um, they just don't seem to understand how to, how to do this or that the tank will actually slide back in order to actually get the tank out of the frame. Um, now I'm just going to pull it back just a little bit. I'm going to try to do it that way, only do a little bit and set it above because I don't want to really disconnect the uh, fuel line particularly. But I got the bolts out. I'm going to take the spacer portions off. Keep the bolts in the right place. All right, so we just gonna slide it back just a little bit, and we will have access to the entire thing, just like so. 
I'm not disconnecting the fuel line. That's my main reason why I'm leaving it right there for the moment. And then I'm just going to unbolt this. Now, this steering damper framework, because I had, I had to do this numerous different ways to try and get it to work, um, and I'm going to have to put some Loctite to make sure it stays on in the future. But right now, all I'm doing is undoing the bolts. And um, I have two different types of bolts. And normally, if, if I was to do this in the future to uh, in, a, in a better fashion, as far as making this particular center post, fortunately, I should just take this off. To make this center post, to make it a lot easier to make, I would actually have this in two different pieces. Um, I would have the platform piece on the bottom that has the two holes going in. And the center post have another bolt coming in from the bottom into the center post to hold it there and have it in two different pieces. It would make it a lot easier to uh, put it on here as well as, excuse me, make it a lot easier to put it on the um, bike because when you first put the, the framework down here and try and drill through it with a hand drill, even if you got some extended extension pieces on here, it's really difficult to get past this bolt. I mean, the center post, you need to not have it here and not have the tank here to drill it because um, you have to drill into the frame. So it's, I would do a slightly different design, but now that I've already have it here and made, I don't see any point in trying to change it. Now, I because of that center post when I was drilling it. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, Sam. Hello. Yeah, because of the center post when we're doing the drilling portion, I had to put in some, I had to over drill some sizes on here. And when I undo this post, I have to not take it out all the way, I have to jiggle it. In order to get this thing to work. But basically what happens with this particular piece of this bolt, you have, it's a blind blind back bolt or whatever, whatever they call it. Anyway, but you stick it through and then this part comes up and then you tighten the bolt down to get it to fully, yeah, to fully extend into a square mold and, or square backing on that to be able to bolt it on because there's no threading on those two pieces. I had to oversize the pole because I drilled the initial two holes in the wrong place. So that's that. But if I was to do it again, I would again I would do this as a single piece. It's really poorly jerry rigged. As a single piece for the two holes going down and one hole coming up and have this top piece a separate piece and then screw this into this piece. Um, so anyway, so what I'm going to do is I am going to take some chemical stripper and remove all the rust. All right. And then I'm going to paint it black so it doesn't rust anymore. And that's what my next step would be. Um, so let's go over to the other workbench. All right, hopefully you guys can see everything. Got some gloves, got the, the T, T post for the steering damper. I got some uh, wood, it's actually a wood stripper, but I do know it runs the reaction. Oops. I do know it runs the reaction backwards on rust, which is what I mean for the user. I also have some uh, paint stripper afterwash. So it's supposed to neutralize the paint. I would not normally be using this except for um, the only reason that I would be using it is because of the uh, paint in it. 
shortly after I strip it. Anyway, um, so I really shouldn't be stripping it on the cardboard, I think. Maybe put it over there. But uh, while it's stripping, I'll be, while the chemicals working, I will be probably put it in. Need a screwdriver. Pop it open. Always forget something, you know. It's a Phillips screwdriver, but it'll work. All right, back to business here. Stripper, pop it open. All right, let me get the belt back on just to. I've been using a ceramic cup for any kind of chemical stripper like this because the chemicals don't damage ceramic. These are uh, PVC coated gloves, which aren't affected by the, by the stripper either, which also means that a lot of the fairing stuff, if I was to use that on the fairing, it wouldn't be affecting it. Um, we also have a little bit of an issue with that because uh, with the fairing, it, it, it keeps the fairing safe. But it also the 2K clothing is on the on the deal. It won't the 2K coating, which is kind of ironic doesn't touch it. It doesn't touch the 2K coating. So uh, 2K meaning two component coating because there's like a chemical hardener in some of the 2K coatings, which is something I, interesting because I, I learned something in the process of trying to take some of the coating off and make it slick. Um, Anyway, we are almost done with this part. There's not too much I'm going to add. Just category to run this rust reaction backwards. And that's it. That's all we're trying to do. We might have to do it a couple of times, maybe. Do a nice quick coating. And then I am going to wipe it off a little bit. But yeah, the, two, the 2K coating with this type of stripper just doesn't do any good. It doesn't remove the 2K coating, which is probably a good thing, I guess. And I got some different chemical stripper to possibly take off the 2K coating of paint, but most everything else it should work pretty good. Okay, so I need to let this react for a little while. And it's quite possible that I'll end up adding another thing of another coating of stripper to it in a little bit. Um, I hope everybody will see all what I did.
Yeah, it looks like you did. All right. Probably had my arm and I came away, huh? Maybe in the future I'll have to turn this workbench around so you can see it from the other side while I work on it. I have to think about how to just set that up for that. Try and not get any stripper on my hands. All right. So we're going to let it sit for a little bit. I'm going to hit stop. We'll see if we'll have to do another coating. All right. We're back. Um, it's almost been about five minutes. I've got bored as far as waiting for everything off camera. I ended up dabbing a little bit more stripper on there, but it's not, not, uh, not too much. I don't know how much this reaction is going to end up doing in, in a total of five minutes. My alarm's about to go off for the five minutes. Probably it was a little over five minutes because I set my alarm for five minutes. Again, not too relevant for all of this, but it's been more than five minutes in any case. So, get my gloves back on. All right, my alarm just went off for five minutes. Put that thing away. Okay, all I'm gonna do is do a dry cloth wipe off of it. See what we get. Yeah, probably won't get all the rust off at this time. Well, that appears to be what the deal is, but it got some of it. Of course, some of the rust was kind of thick in some areas. I don't have a you know, this. So this will get lighter, but it's not going to be completely gone. You can see this, but I have a huge amount of rust still there. Um, it's not running all the reaction back. My next option is probably to take a little sandpaper to it, maybe, which I probably should have done in the first place to knock the bulk of the rust off. Or maybe the angle grinder would have done a pretty good job to take off the rust and then. Uh, a lot of it anyway, and we get down to the, when I get down to the pitted portion, I should have done the chemical strip on that, but, you know, that's what happens when you take shortcuts. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to, right now I'm just going to use a little bit of water, get the cloth wet, wipe it off clean. I think I might get my angle grinder out. Real quick, scoop this over, and we will do some quick angle grinding on the deal. Probably not the best thing to do with the chemicals out here, right next to everything. Now, when I put this in the box, that might be better. Maybe. So I get for trying to take shortcuts on this stuff, probably, huh? Maybe. All right, I'm going to go get some water real quick. Try and get most of this chemical portion off. And then I will get the angle grinder out. And do some angle grinding. Probably waste more time explaining it than, it <laughs> than actually doing it. Anyway, I'll be right back. Oh, I need a cloth to get one of the cloths. Get it wet and just wipe it off real quick.
just say it's fairly standard. It's in about the same big plan of antibiotic chemistry. Especially if it's not taken off the not taken off the rust, man. <laughs> Alright. We'll throw that back there for the moment. Let's see if I get the plug set up. Get a little flat, flat disc on here. So I'm just going to have to do this fairly quickly. We could do the entire thing. Believe it enough. Thank <laughs> you. 
So that knocked most of the rust off, but there's still little divots in there. It's supposed to get really seriously grind down into it, but I'm going to try it with the chemical stripper first. And then go from there. Um, so I'm just kind of warm now. That's all right. Maybe use that damn, damn cloth to focus. Anyway, I don't really have a proper tool place to keep my tools and toolbox and anything, so I end up sorting just inside my door here. And uh, it works, sort of, but better than just put it in there. It's like my garage. Little storage space on this. Some of my tools and garage, and that's what it feels like anyway. But anyway, um, let's get this. Try the rest of the stripper on here. The little tiny rust spots that are left. Um. A lot easier this time with a relatively few rust, relatively little rust left. Yep, that's a good old fashioned stripper match now. Yeah, definitely uh, recognize that from my. Younger years when my mother would do the furniture repair business. She would do a set this stripper up on all sorts of furniture and she used steel wool and flat scrapers and all sorts of stuff to try and remove all the finishes that's on the, on everything but Being that you can't like up, you can't scale up something, something like that of, of a uh, furniture refinishing business like that. You don't get into the big money. You just kind of be able to pay for your labor. So you can't scale up. So unlike some things where you do a design or design a product, you can scale up a little bit easier. Mass manufacturing. But this, I mean, it, had I done this a number of years ago, I could probably have gotten a little bit better option in, in uh, doing um, a category of doing an aftermarket product, right? If I did this a few years ago, but they don't make the motorcycle anymore. So an aftermarket product for a motorcycle that is no longer in production doesn't really work too well. I mean, granted, it's 17 and a half years out of date for the entire motorcycle. So I could, in theory, if I had enough money, do an entire manufacturing facility, manufacture the motorcycle, put in all the new design stuff, or and it's going through the repairs and figure out what works, what doesn't. Then if you could do a mass manufacturing of a motorcycle company that way, but not, not in this category of, of just doing little bits and pieces to add on to an existing motorcycle that isn't in a mass manufacturing. Of course, if it's mass manufacturing, it would be 
more likely in the category of, of adding a piece of design to a motorcycle to up the design or up the, uh, maybe I should say design, up the engineering spec. Anyway, um, I'm going to set my five minute timer. I'll get my darn thing open again. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Facial recognition. All right. Okay, I set my five minute timer. We'll clean it off and then uh, put some neutralizer in there. I don't think I am going to attempt to do anything more other than uh, cleaning out my, I'm going to clean my cup out, do some afterwash, put it on it so that we can neutralize the stripper so I have a good adhesion of the paint that I plan on doing. But right now I'm going to do that off camera to clean up my brush and deal with the paint stripper. Um, but, and then I can wash the brushes out. I'll wipe that off and we'll do a quick deal with the uh, stripper uh, neutralizer. All this stuff comes from like Ace Hardware. So pretty much you can get it from any, any hardware store probably. But anyway, I am going to go clean this off camera. We'll wait for the five minutes. I'll come back and we'll do this. Then we'll... Then we'll uh, Paint. Anyway, be right back. Okay, so our next stage is to. All right, five minute timer is up. So I'm just going to wipe this off with water. I'm not so much worried about my skin, really, but. Looks like some of this is coming off better than what it did before. where I just don't care about some of these rest spots. But I'm just paint over. I'm just trying to get most of it to not rest later on. All right. Let's use one of these other rags. Um, and we're going to use a paint stripper after wash. I don't know how well this works or not. Shouldn't be too corrosive. I haven't used it before, so I don't know for sure. All right. So we're just going to wipe this over. Probably just a good cleaner type of thing almost. degreaser cleaner or something. All right. Which is perfect for, I mean, if it's a degreaser cleaner type of thing, it's perfect for what I'm using it for. Or the paint. Now, I didn't get the paint while I was off camera, so I'm gonna have to go in there and grab the paint real quick. This is enough to I just need to let it dry for a little bit. Three, four seconds or something. And I've got the paint. Alright. So given that I have no paint booth, paint booth. And I'm not doing anything big enough for me to justify uh, creating one while I'm here. So I am going to paint inside the box. Now, maybe I should just turn the box so you can actually see what I'm doing. But 
So basically, it'll capture all the extra side spray things. Um, I don't know. Can you see that now? Yeah, I think so. Um, so basically, I'm going to take this bolt because this is the one part that's threaded on this particular thing. The other two are just through and through holes. So I don't really care if some paint coating gets in there because I'm just going to shove it through. But this part I am a little bit concerned about because it's threaded. I don't want to get any extra coating on it. Um, I can always clean it off the threads a little bit with a brush or steel, steel wire brush or something. But I just need to make sure that those threads are pretty well covered. And then you just choose a position here. Pray that we spray it reasonably well, right? Let's see, nozzle's open. For the top side, oh, I just get paint on the tape, but that's okay. And I'm just I'm going to have to let it sit for a couple of minutes and then turn it over and paint the other side. This is probably a really bad, I think it is a kind of a bad painting job. It might have some drips there because I put, sprayed it too close. But, uh, I'm not much of a painter. But again, I'm just trying to get it to, uh, I don't know how long it says it takes to dry. Just trying to get it to be covered so it doesn't rust all over again. Always bringing in one day dusty conditioners in the room. Use paint, use your use paint and gloves with the other brushes. Ten to sixteen inches from the surface. Yeah, it'll probably run. That's all right. Um, allow more time at cooler temperatures. Uh, dries to touch in two to four hours to handle five to nine hours and fully dry in 24. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang it because I don't like wait, waiting that long just to paint the other side. So I'm going to find myself wire, hang it up, and paint the other side. I'm not a patient guy, what can I say? All right. I have little bits and pieces of stuff falling down. All right. Let's hang this puppy up. And let's see if you turn it the right way. Uh, that's my last side. 
paint, so let's kind of wrap this wire up. Really. Let's paint this other side. Yep, and I'm painting way too close. And the reason I'm painting too close right now is, sorry to say, is, I'm not worried about the drips. Um, just trying to make sure I get a good coating with the inside of those holes. Um, so I guess I'm going to wait till that dries, and then we will deal with the edge. Rest of the uh, deal. Um, it says two to four hours to dry to touch. Let's see, what was it? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Scrap to us, blah, blah, blah. blah. Dries to touch in two to four hours. Handles to handle in five to nine hours and fully dry in 24. So we're going to go five hours. We're going to go five hours. So I am going to, it's 439. So we're going to go with nine, nine, 436. We're going to go with nine, 930. Thing. Okay, Google set alarm for 9.30 p.m. Set alarm for 9.30 p.m. Maybe. Ah. Let me try it again. Set alarm for 9.30 p.m. Alarm set for 9.30 p.m. All right. So we're going to come back at 9.30. And we will do a little bit more. All right. So I am turning this off, and I'll be back again at 9.30 for oh, maybe a little bit of reassembly on the bike, or we'll see how the rest of this works out. I'm going to put the paint away and the knife and other things, except for the steering damper uh, post and uh, we'll get back to you around 9 30. There we go. Now we're recording. All right. It is a couple days, a couple days later. I'm afraid that uh, it's not as close to the format of the pattern as I probably was expecting, but learned a little bit about painting, given this is my first time with actual doing spray paint portion. Um, but I do believe I'm learning in the process of this. Side. Now, I did explain this once before that this bolt is not standard bolt. I didn't do a throw and tap, I did a, a blind bolt uh, version on this, which is not not really normal, but we got the job done. Let's pop that in. Hopefully, it locks. Sorry, my hand. 
hands are in the way. Put the tape on the top to try and protect the rest of the, the, rest of the painting process. I did, uh, I found out that drips do concern me because mainly because they take longer to dry. This is why it's two days later. Finger. So, future, I'm going to try and not have any drips. Not that I cared about the appearance particularly, but it matters for, for some other things in it, <laughs> for how it dries. All right. So like I said before, we're going to put the tapered end of the screw on the top and then on the bottom we're going to do this spacer to maximize the gimbling of this part of the gimbal. And get this over position. Screw it right there. Let's 
see what I'm doing on the back part of the tank. here so we can still turn quite nicely to get full range this um, has the internal component to keep it turning and banging against the frame but this is the maximum turning range and that's the maximum turning range this way is barely clear to take but it does so it's not leaning against the bank anywhere so we're good Everything is put back together. It's painted, rust free, which is the important part of this. Um, and let's put the seat back on. <coughs> basically corrects the speed when you have a different gearing of the sprockets. I'm going to call them sprockets, but they're basically for the drive chain. And so that it doesn't, there we go, it all clicked in nicely. Everything's put back together. Um, basically because I have a different gearing on drive chain sprockets. Anyway, so that's that for this particular video. And hopefully we will see you next week. And uh, hit the like button and subscribe. Have a good day.